Hi everyone, my name is Miss Alyssa and today I'm going to be showing you the library's latest STEAM project. This activity is to make a constellation projector, which is a very fancy name for a very simple project that will look a little bit like this when it's done. The materials that you need to make this project are available at the library starting March 16th, 2021. You would come in and grab a baggie like this that will have most of the supplies you need. Once you get that bag home, you should also grab a glue stick and scissors. So make sure you have those two things as well as your baggie. And I will take you step by step through making your own projector. All right, now let's open our bag and get started on this project. I'm just gonna pull out the craft tube the toilet paper roll and set that aside. So that's ready for later. The first thing you might want to pull out is the colorful piece of paper like this that has a set of instructions, which I'm going to show you now in this video, and a picture of what yours might look like when it's done, just to give you an idea of what you're making. So you can grab those instructions and set them aside, and then grab the large white piece of paper that's in the bag that has a selection of constellations. There are a number of different constellations on this page and you need to pick one of them to cut out and use for your projector. So go ahead and look over this page and see which one appeals to you and cut one of them out. You can see I've already cut some out of the bottom here. I've cut two out of the bottom and here is one of them. This is what I picked for my projector. So cut that out of the piece of paper. You just want to cut along the dotted line. Here, let me show you again. There is a dotted line for each circle and you just want to cut along that um, to get your, your constellation free from the rest. And now you want to grab the black construction paper that's in the bag. Right now, it's already cut out as a circle. It doesn't need to be a circle. A square of construction paper would work too. But I've put circular ones in the bags. You need to take your black construction paper and your constellation circle and glue them together. You want to glue the constellation to the middle of the black paper. So let's do that now. Let me grab, we actually don't need the scissor scissors anymore. We only needed them to cut out that first circle. Just gonna set those aside and put some glue at the middle of my black paper. And press the constellation down to the very middle there, or close to the middle at least. So it looks a little bit like this now. You may want to give it a moment to dry. The next step is to put this piece of paper over top of one end of the craft tube. You're going to put it right over top like this. And you want to make sure the circle with the constellations is again right over the craft tube, so in the middle. Um, so as I'm kind of feeling around on the construction paper, I can feel where the craft tube is and make sure that the stars are in the, in the opening of the craft tube. And then I'm just gonna pull the black paper down to the sides, just like this. Nice and simple. Just squish the paper down so it's around the sides of the craft tube and then grab one of the rubber bands that's in your bag and use that rubber band to hold the black paper in place. So I'm just going to loop my rubber band around twice so it's nice and tight. already 
looks a lot like the example of a projector I showed you at the beginning of the video, but there is one very important step that we need to do next. The next thing you need to grab out of your bag is the toothpick. If you don't have a toothpick, if for some reason you lost it or it wasn't in your bag, um, you could use a sharpened pencil or even a push pin for this step, but you should have a toothpick. And you are going to use this toothpick to puncture a hole in each star. So you wanna look at each black star in your constellation and push through with the push pin, the toothpick, to make a little hole like that. I'm just gonna do it now for each star in the constellation. All right, there it goes. I am just gonna hold mine up and take a peek through it to see how it's looking, if every hole's gone through when they have. And now the projector is basically done, but you could decorate it at this point if you wanted to add stickers or markers, you can do that at the end. The last thing that you'll need um, is a flashlight. If you don't have a flashlight, you could also use the flashlight app on a smartphone. So you could ask your parents if they can use their phone to make a light, but you should, you might have a small flashlight at home that you can grab and you want to stick the flashlight in this end of the projector. And now the light will project through the holes at this end and make the shape of the constellations, the shape of the stars, onto a wall or another surface in a dark room. Uh, so that's your projector. That's really it, is make sure you puncture those holes in, decorate it as you want, and then grab a flashlight and explore in a dark room and test it out, see how far away or how close you need to get for your projector to make the stars, and if you can spot the constellation. If you have other craft tubes at home, you've got extra toilet paper rolls, extra paper towel rolls, you can make a few more of these projectors and do like a whole night sky. Mm -hmm. Test it all out, however you'd like to use it at home. That was actually all we had for you today. I hope you enjoyed making your own constellation projector. The last thing we're gonna do in this video is read a short story about a little girl named Mabel who really wanted to see more stars and she did not have access to her very own projector. So she came up with a different solution. So please stay tuned while I read our last story. This book is called The Stars Just Up the Street. Mabel loved the stars. She could count five from her window when it wasn't cloudy, and 19 from her backyard in a narrow patch of sky. Her grandfather loved to tell stories, and Mabel listened hardest to the parts about the night sky on the prairie where he grew up. Once, Meteors fell there like rain. Sometimes the new moon rose so big, he said, it looked like another planet. And every night there were thousands of stars. Thousands? Mabel knew something was wrong. She climbed to the tallest tree out back. Even from up here, she called down to Grandpa, I can only count 37. Well, Grandpa said, I think we would see more stars on the hill just up the street. The sky is wide there, and I bet it's darker. They took a walk. The road wound up and up. At the top, Mabel started to count. 
only 103, she said at last. Then she noticed all the lit up windows and porches. Maybe people can turn off their lights, she said. Maybe they would, Grandpa said. Let's ask them, Mabel said, and she took Grandpa's hand. They went door to door. It was a bit hard to explain, and a few people refused. I might bump into the wall. I don't want to step on my cat. I'd like to help, but how can I make dinner in the dark? Come outside with us, Mabel suggested, just for a bit. In the end, many of them did just that. It's been a long time since I went stargazing, someone said. Look, the Big Dipper, someone else shouted. You can see more stars, Mabel said, and she began to count them. At 214, she suddenly stopped. The glow from a nearby streetlight blocked part of the sky. Grandpa, who can switch that off? Well, the town controls the streetlights, Grandpa said. The next day, Grandpa and Mabel visited the mayor at town hall. The mayor told them no. We keep safe, well-lit streets in this town, she said. Ugh, said Mabel as they left town hall. I guess I can look at the stars from the tree. Maybe 37 is not so bad. But on the way home, they ran into the mail carrier and told him about their meeting with the mayor. Hmm, he said. Maybe I'll have a word with the mayor, too. Then Mabel decided to tell everyone they saw. They talked to a lady walking her dog, a family on their way to the library, and a crowd of speedy bicycle riders who had stopped at a traffic light. Mabel got really good at getting to the point. You won't believe how many more stars we would see, she said. All through that day, the mayor received phone calls, emails, and even a few in-person visits. But her answer was always no. What about burglars, she said. Dark streets don't increase crime, said a police officer. What about people falling on dark paths? The mayor went on. Hand out flashlights, suggested a parks and recreation officer. There are town regulations, the mayor yelled. Meanwhile, back at home, Mabel thought about how she might convince the mayor. Night had already fallen when the mayor opened Mabel's email. When was the last time you saw thousands of stars. The mayor closed her eyes. Long ago, lying on a striped blanket under the darkest of summer skies, she had tried to count them all. The mayor opened her eyes. Okay, she typed, let's try it. On the next new moon, People arrived on the hill with dogs and blankets and snacks. They saw bright stars and dim stars, Venus and Mars, white stars, golden stars, and stars of the hottest blue. It's a lot of stars. Now, this is what I call stargazing, Grandpa said. How many are up there, Mabel? But Mabel was looking around instead. There was quite a crowd, and a little down the way, the mayor sat on a striped blanket, gazing up at the sky. I haven't even started to count, Mabel told Grandpa. A tradition began that night. People gathered every new moon 
bringing telescopes, binoculars, egg salad sandwiches, and strawberry pie. Each time, the sky was a little darker as lights out spread from street to street. Everyone saw meteor showers and the Milky Way, planets, constellations, and satellites. Mabel wondered if she would ever count them all, those stars just up the street. There was definitely thousands of them. The end.